I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thanks for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering. In this episode, we go back to our Microsoft Access playlist and we're going to take a look at how to use wscript.shell in order to run other applications and other files outside of Access whenever we need to do that. And sometimes we really need to do that in order to uh, maybe process some files or to open another document or open a map or something like that and it makes it very very handy if you can just have a button in your access application that opens that particular file. So without further ado, let's get to it. Want to download the files used in today's video? Make sure to check out my downloads page, the link is in the description. Okay, so this is a pretty fun one today. Uh, I've got a little uh, folder here with some little scripts and programs in, in here. I've got an access uh, bat.batch file, I've got a, a VBS file, a VB script file, and then a Python file, uh, and then I've got this access database that has nothing in it yet. Um, I haven't included anything here. All I've got is my scripts in there, and uh, if I look at these in uh, Notepad++, you can see, you know, I've got a title in, in here and I've, I'm just doing a couple of actions inside of my batch file and I stop at the end with a pause and then with uh, VB script I've got two message boxes. So this file should create two uh, pop-ups and then my Python file is just this uh, file that I did in another episode. You can see it here. If you look up above, you can click on the card if you want to see that uh, uh, video. Um, so if I run these, if I just double click them, you know, the shell basically uh, runs through my commands to echo some information and, and then it does uh, press any key to continue. And then my VB script basically has those two message boxes in it. Um, and you can check that out. There's my <laughs> doing lots of stuff. And then my Python script used uh, Plotly to make a Plotly map uh, using uh, which it puts out into the browser and also creates a file that can be uh, put into a web page but you can just run it. Um, and so it opens this nice little uh, map of Montreal and this was some car share information. If you want to see this video uh, make sure to check out uh, the card up above here and you can see how to create a video like or how to create a map like this one um, and with uh, some information on it about car share or other plotting exercises that you might have and there's the uh, the map file that got spit out by the by the uh, Python script and so what we're gonna do is we want to be able to run all of these things from inside of our access application uh, and so what we're going to do is we're going to create three buttons. I'm just going to grab a button. I'll, I'll drop it onto the form here and uh, I'm going to control C. I'll copy that and then I'm going to control V, control V again and I'm just going to paste a couple there and then I'm just going to rename these to uh, something that makes sense here instead of command zero. I'll put CMD batch in there this is on the other tab in the in the property sheet and then I'll do the same thing for the next button I'll put uh, CMD uh, VBS uh, VB script on there and then on the third one I'll do uh, CMD uh, Python and uh, so that's gonna give me some names that I understand and then I'll quickly type in just over top here let's put the the uh, caption for the button up on here. There we go. And uh, that will be VB script. And then the last one will be Python. So if we click on each of these buttons, we want to see our program run uh, that, you know, for each of those. And to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to click on the, uh, the event tab and then go to the on click event and click the ellipsis for each of those and it'll open the code window. I'm just resizing it here. And uh, that's gonna open up the click event uh, for that button. Now we're gonna save that click event. We're gonna populate it after 
Uh, but what we're going to do first is we're going to create our own sub, which you can do just by typing sub uh, into the uh, editor here. As long as you're not inside of another sub or a function, uh, you can type in sub and then you can type the name of your sub and, and we're going to put an argument in. Because we're going to reuse this function several times, we don't want to copy and paste code. And so that's one of the key concepts you should get about learning how to code is that you don't want to repeat yourself and DRY is don't repeat yourself. So as long as you stick to that, you'll do fine. And so we're going to make one function here, or one subroutine in this case, and that will be used three times. And each time we use it, we're going to pass in uh, the file or the, the uh, exe with an argument that we want to execute with shell. And so what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to dim uh, an, an shell object here. And then we'll set that uh, shell object to create object. And so this is a late binding example. And we're going to say create object wscript.shell. And that's going to give us uh, a shell from uh, Windows host script uh, that will allow us to run pretty much anything and we can just say, uh, you know, shell.run uh, and put our argument after so that it knows what to do. Um, and then we'll set uh, shell equal to nothing at the end to uh, release uh, resources there. And then that's really all we need. Uh, you could also put a, you know, uh, on error go to in here if you wanted to have some error handling. Uh, but there's our file, there's our create object. And uh, now what we can do is in each of our uh, buttons, we can basically just say run from shell and then just say what we want to run. And so in our first button, which is for the batch script, we can put in our, uh, you know, our, our path to our batch script in there. Um, and uh, I'll say access underscore bat dot bat. That's the one I showed you in the beginning. And then if we go back to our uh, user interface here, we can click on our uh, VBS button and do the same thing. Click on the ellipsis by the on click event. And then we can say run from shell in the same way that we did before. And we could say, uh, you know, put in our path and then the name of our file. And we'll put our uh, access underscore VBS dot uh, VBS uh, into that argument there and that will cause the VB script to execute and there's our file right there and so we'll do the same thing we can go back here and we'll do the same thing and we'll grab our our Python button and we'll put the uh, click on the ellipsis uh, go to the code builder and click OK and it's going to create that event for us and then you can go run from shell and in this case we're going to do a little bit different because in some cases you need to specify the program you're going to open and then the file that you open uh, so in this case we're going to call python.exe and then we're going to put in the path to our um, to our file our Dot .py file and uh, that's the plotly map dot .py there and so it's going to call python.exe and then it's going to execute that file and this is very common so you might call word.exe and then the name of the word document or excel.exe and the name of the excel file uh, if you were not opening it using VBA like we did in another video uh, but we can save all of that and we can close it and now we, what we can do is we can open our form fresh here and we can go to our batch and uh, oh, there we go that opened up there um, and you can see it opened this one and uh, it said press any key to continue and uh, I can open my VB script and it gives me those two uh, uh, message box buttons and if I click Python if I grab this fast enough you'll see the uh, the coordinates that were the test coordinates uh, and then the browser window that opens uh, with our um, car share data in it 
uh, with all of our data points and things that you know our users can look at and that's a super cool function that you could have in your access database and so you can see how easy it is to open other files uh, from within access and uh, that is how you can do it using wscript.shell. Looking for additional resources for your project? Make sure to check out the additional links in the description.